Gallium scan shows no bright spots of any kind. It means it's not TB or any other infection. There are no bright spots because the whole thing's too bright. Except for the liver. The tech overexposed the image a bit, but it's nothing. The liver looks fine. Could be lung cancer. The tumor causes structural damage. The lung caves in on itself. Mm. Also explains the anemia. Doesn't explain the liver problem, though. Her lung collapsed. There is no liver problem. You guys look at the liver on this thing? There's no liver problem. Seriously, look at the liver. There's nothing there. Why not? Because there's nothing wrong. Every organ in the scan is lit up like a 100-watt bulb, except for her liver, which is hovering around 60 watts. Not one of them good 60 watters, but an energy saving. You're saying her liver's shutting down because the lighting is off? You just don't want a cancer diagnosis, because then you'd have to deal with Wilson. Lung cancer is a lame diagnosis. Avoiding Wilson is an added bonus. This is wrong. Cutting house off? Might not work, but it's not wrong. Bone windows look clean. Abigail, we need you to hold still, OK? Can I come out? Just hang in there two more minutes, and we'll be done. OK. Because it's effective doesn't make it right. Cuddy's bending the rules to get a patient to do the right thing. Who worked for a doctor like that? And the ends justify the means? The ends involve us keeping our jobs, sure. Lung brain camera is clean. No masses. It's not lung cancer. Abigail, you OK? House was right. Her liver's failing. Endoscopy confirmed the vomiting was caused by variceal bleeding. Blood work also confirms House's hypothesis. I get it. House was right. It's the liver. Let's move on. What causes liver disease and a collapsed lung? Schistosomiasis. Parasite There's no eosinophilia. Cirrhosis could explain. Could be a hepatoma. She's 15. It's not liver cancer. It's not unheard of. Cirrhosis fits better. The question is, what caused it? Could be hepatitis, but Chiari. Or drugs and alcohol. If anyone has a reason to dull the pain, it's a teenage dwarf. I'll do a liver biopsy to confirm. And I'll search the patient's home for drugs and alcohol. You were right about the liver failure. The patient had very still bleeding, which suggested cirrhosis, but off the clock. You predicted this. You obviously saw something. Obviously. Liver biopsy was negative for cirrhosis, but it shows sclerosing cholangitis. Even weirder, there's no increase in alkaline phosphatase. Hmm, medical mystery. Sounds like the kind of thing I'd be good at. Forget about the specific nature of the liver dysfunction. It's irrelevant. The dwarf's problem is global. That's why the gallium scan was bright. It's gonna spread throughout her entire body unless you stop it. If that were true, more than the lungs and liver would be affected. It will be. It'll spread through the biliary tree and hit her pancreas next. Stop retracing your steps. Get ahead of it. Forget the liver and focus on the pancreas. Because after that, actually after that, it doesn't really matter what it hits because pretty much all roads lead to a dead dwarf. That tube is going all the way down to my liver? Don't worry. You'll be sedated. Sometimes doctors have to do things that make people uncomfortable to help them. But we always want to respect the patient's wishes and not shove things down their throats. Foreman. You haven't given her the sedative. No. Abigail? Abigail? She's unconscious. Check her airway. Airway's clear. Her breath smells fruity. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Hang in instantly drip at 0.1 mix per kick per hour. Pancreas is failing. You ready to call a house yet? Because of your daughter's dwarfism, we've had to pick a higher entry point for the lumbar puncture, which increases the risk. So why not do the lupus test first? In the interest of time, we think it's best to proceed on both fronts. You have no idea what's wrong with my daughter. We have several theories. What does Dr. House think? He's, he had to go home sick. My daughter may be dying, and he's gone home with the sniffles? Well, he's not. He was the only one who seemed to have any idea what was wrong with her. He better be really damn sick. He is. Dr. Cameron, come quick. There's something wrong with Abby. Couldn't be too severe. Her cardiac alarm didn't go off. It's not her heart. She's bleeding. Nice bear. It's a dog. House. It's not stills. Steroids helped until the patient started bleeding from the ears and mouth. It's a bear. His name is Bill. He's a dog. 
You win. You can have Vicodin. Words have set meanings for a reason. If you see an animal like Bill and you try to play fetch, Bill's gonna eat you because Bill's a bear. Are you on something? You got your hands on pain meds. Bill has fur, four legs, and a collar. He's a dog. It's between cancer and autoimmune. See, that's what we call a faulty syllogism. Just because you call Bill a dog doesn't mean that he is. A dog. We gotta x-ray our patient's leg. Her leg looks fine. Weird, huh? Why aren't you detoxing? Willpower. What? What? Normal is not normal if you're not normal. Did you just take a pill? No. So how does a dwarf have completely normal growth plates? It's impossible. We must be missing something. How many pills have you taken? Not nearly as many as I'm going to take. I've forgotten how delicious they were. I didn't give them to him. But can we forget my vices, get back to my virtues? We were missing the fact that just because we called her a dwarf doesn't mean she is a dwarf. Everyone assumes she was because of her mother. There's no test for CHH dwarfism, so she lost an identity, but we gained a symptom. If she doesn't have skeletal dwarfism, then her short stature must be caused by growth hormone deficiency. And something's wrong with her pituitary gland, and based on her size, it's been wrong for a while. So what connects a long-term pituitary issue with problems in the lungs, liver, and pancreas? Oh, you guys and your bickering. Cancer versus autoimmune. Obviously, you think it's something else. Nope. I think it's both. Liar hands cell histiocytosis, also known as you got your cancer in my autoimmune disease. The immune component responded to the stills treatment, led to the short-term improvement. The cancer portion didn't. We dismissed this earlier because there were no neurological symptoms. Yeah. It's not your fault. The only neurological symptom was her height. Who could have noticed? This is your pituitary gland. This is the granuloma that's been crushing it. No pituitary equals no growth hormone equals not that much. She's not a dwarf. Just hormonally challenged. What about my mom? Your mom's the real deal. She's just a tiny little poser. Your recent ear infections caused your body to release a cascade of the same cells that made the granuloma. It attacked your lungs, moved onto your liver, and hitched it right over to your pancreas. We can nuke them with a mild course of chemo and then remove the granuloma. And then what? What will happen to her then? Well, let me see if I can make this clear. This pill represents a pill. And my mouth represents your daughter's mouth. We deposit the pill in the mouth. You may never be tall enough to play in the WNBA. You should be able to post up your mom, no problem. <laughs> 